As promised, this week we are talking about feeling characters. How to identify them, what makes them similar, and more, right after this. Hi, the Inspired Actor here. If you're new to this channel, we are dedicated to helping actors become better artists through quick lessons like these and other videos about theater, film, and the actor's life. If you want to see more videos like these, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your colleagues. Thanks a lot. In our last video, we talked about thinking characters. We identified many of the archetypal characteristics that they all share, and we discussed the importance and use of archetypes for the actor. It's important to note here that we are talking about archetypal characteristics and not archetypal characters. When Chekhov teachers talk about archetypal characters, they are talking mostly about Jungian archetypes like the hero, the lover, and the jester, or story archetypes like the warrior, the villain, and the seductress. While both can serve as a spine upon which to build a character, when we talk about archetypal characteristics, we are talking about common ways of speaking, moving, and existing in the world that all characters with the same psychological energy generally share. Not that these characters can't diverge from the norm. Diverging from the template is what makes your character unique, after all. But knowing these similarities can help the actor both identify and use the psychological forces of thinking, feeling, and willing in order to create compelling and truthful characteristics and traits upon which to build their fully realized creation. Today, we are considering the archetypal characteristics of the feeling psychology. This would be a character in which the feeling center or force is more dominant than their willing or thinking centers. The greater the dominance, the more these characters tend to stand out. So a character with a very powerful feeling force would be more likely to have these traits and reveal them as unveiled and as often as possible. A more balanced character may show some traits of the other psychological forces as well. So just as we did last time, let's try to group together some feeling characters to see what makes them similar. These characteristics do not necessarily have to be loving or positive feelings. Feelings. They can also exhibit other types of emotions, such as sadness or rage. What's important is that they reveal a tendency towards feeling. So here are three feeling characters to begin with. The Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz, SpongeBob SquarePants, Miss Hannigan from Annie. The first thing we notice is that all of these characters' centers are all located within the chest. As with thinking characters in the head, we notice this almost immediately as their chests seem to be leading the rest of their bodies through the space physically. You are sinfully handsome. All attention is drawn to the chest. The Tin Man is literally barrel chested. The chest costume piece, ironically, clearly causes some problem for the actor as it gives him a kind of forward lean. Still, his chest is the first thing to really enter any space he is in, and his constant references to his heart throughout the movie makes this an obvious center. Remember, they all had it within themselves the whole time, says the wizard, so he is feeling centered throughout the movie. SpongeBob barely goes an episode without expressing great joy and also crying an ocean of tears. So he is also clearly a feeling character. He's basically made of chest, and his face literally resides in his chest. If you notice and try to imitate his general walk, you see that he generally does enter chest first. The live action musical seems to reinforce this as well. Miss Hannigan is played by the incomparable Carol Burnett, who is a feeling person generally, as seen in most of the work she's done. Miss Hannigan does not generally feel positive emotions, however. Anger, pettiness, greed, jealousy, she has all those in spades, and again, she leads from the chest. Now let's listen to how feeling characters speak. Snow White. Now don't tell me who you are. Let me guess. I know. You're a dog. Marilyn Monroe. Once I was in Atlantic City and all the gentlemen in the hotel wanted to sit at my table. Orsino from Twelfth Night. Music be the food of love to lay on. Give me excess of it. 
all of these characters practically sing their lines. While thinking characters tend to be very monotone in the way they speak, feeling characters have a tendency towards melody. Their vocal quality displays a much greater range in pitch and tone than other characters. This makes sense because song and singing have a profound effect on our mood and emotions. In musicals, a character tends to sing to express emotions too powerful to articulate with just talking. Hand me down my can of beans, hand me down my can of beans, hand me down my can of beans, I'm coming away. Music has been proven scientifically to affect memory and feeling. In fact, many scientists feel that humans sang before they could speak. Singing is our primal urge to convey how we feel. Connected to this is the feeling character's accentuation and emphasis on their vowels. A, E, I, O, U. All are extended and much more pronounced in feeling character speech. Let's look at words themselves. All language is an act of will. Prior to language, we were only able to point and indicate what we wanted another person to know or understand. But with the invention of language, we were able to force our thoughts into another person's mind. Here, I'll prove it to you. Ball. I bet you are now picturing a ball. Red ball. Ha! Now you are picturing a red ball. Big red ball. You see? The more words I use, the greater the specificity of the picture I am literally forcing into your brain. Thinking characters tend to emphasize the consonants, particularly plosives, hard consonants for linear, crisp thought. But try to express an emotion with It's very difficult. if not impossible. Emotions generally live in the vowels. We can express any emotion we want using only vowels. Uh. Ooh. <laughs> Consonants serve to turn our emotions into specific pictures that we will into other people's minds. Language is anything but passive. Shakespeare knew this, which is why when his characters are especially emotional, he gives them lots of juicy vowels to play with. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Juliet's speech positively drips with emotion love specifically, and Shakespeare gives the actress lots of oohs and ees to play with. Remember Orsino? Oh, it came on my ear like the sweet sound of the breeze upon a bank of flowers. So much emotion living in the vowels. Next, let's look at how feeling characters move through space. Maria in Sound of Music. <laughs> Holly Go Lightly from Breakfast at Tiffany's. The only writer I've ever been out with is Benny Shacklett. Mozart from Amadeus. <laughs> While thinking characters move in a linear way, straight lines from point A to point B, feeling characters tend to flow in curved lines with many smaller points along the way. Far from being a straight line, feeling characters find every opportunity to either move in curves or create curves with their bodies. Rarely are they rigid or stiff in posture or appearance, and when they are, it should be really uncomfortable for them. <laughs> feeling characters can create curves with their arms, their legs, their fingers, or their general stance. Their feelings flow through their body unencumbered. And speaking of flow, while thinking characters have a flying quality to their movement and speech, feeling characters flow like water through space. Notice here how Maria's very first act in the movie, Sound of Music, is to twirl in a circle, 
Also, she doesn't walk through the trees, but kind of dances with them in curves. Holly Golightly takes every opportunity to bend her body into curves. Mozart from Amadeus does likewise, but at a faster pace. Thinking of water, water can flow like down a gentle stream or be quite powerful as in a flood or hurricane. So when thinking of the flowing quality of feeling characters, one need not be too concerned about keeping with a certain tempo. Whatever the scene calls for, just remember that there should be a flow to characters like these. Feeling characters also tend to be more tactile than other types of characters. The feeling of touch is very important to them, so they take many opportunities to touch other characters or objects or themselves whenever they can. So to review, the archetypal characteristics of feeling characters are leading from the chest, a melodic way of speaking, an emphasis on their vowels, curved and circular motion, a flowing quality of movement, an emphasis on the sense of touch. I'd like to end with a few clips from someone I feel embodies the feeling characteristics I've described, Robin Williams. You're off and running the wonders of life, and women know the moment they get pregnant because it's like a ping, and they start to glow. Robin Williams excelled at playing characters who were either exuberant and filled with silliness or laughter. Characters like Mork from Ork or the genie from Aladdin. Fly, be free! He also played characters who were going through some kind of grief, like in Goodwill Hunting or What Dreams May Come. I don't regret the 18 years I was married to Nancy. I don't regret the six years I had to give up counseling when she got sick. And I don't regret the last years when she got really sick. I'm sure as hell don't regret Mr. Damn Game. Many of his characters have a polarity of both intense negative and positive emotions, like Mrs. Doubtfire or The World According to Garp. <laughs> William seemed to be drawn to or imbued his characters with a pronounced feeling center. Good Morning Vietnam and Patch Adams are other great examples of his tendency toward the feeling psychology. Five months in Saigon, my best friend turns out to be a VC. This will not look good on a resume! Some other characters and people to watch when considering archetypal characteristics of feeling are Mr. Rogers, Elton John, Venus or Aphrodite, Leslie Nope from Parks and Recreation, Harley Quinn, John Coffey from The Green Mile. Can you think of some others? Let me know in the comments. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please click that like button. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask them in the comments. Next time, we'll be talking about the archetype of willing, so don't forget to subscribe and you'll be notified as soon as it posts. These videos are a little bit more complex than some of the others that I do, so it might take longer than a week for me to post them, but you'll be notified as soon as I do. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.